Hey, welcome, Waiter Nation. My name is Michael Fagan. and I'm your host of the show. I hope you join me today. I'm riding solo. Uh, I hope you fill up my comments and we can talk about all things that are going on in uh, your restaurant. I don't have a co-host today. Normally, my co-host is Josh on Wednesdays. Giovanna came in on Thursdays. I've been talking about to a lot of people to come in, but we got a lot of questions. It's a huge week. It's a huge week for the restaurants because in the Sun Belt states, all the restaurants are shutting down after they opened up for a month, which has to be devastating if you're a waiter down there. Uh, in New Jersey and New York and Pennsylvania, I'm in New Jersey and Atlantic City. We're going to open up on uh, Thursday the 2nd. Uh, myself, I'm a little on edge. I haven't been notified to come back to work. I, I'm still feeling confident that that's going to happen. But uh, as of right now, I'm not. So I do hope that uh, somebody out there has the guts to click in and join me, be my guest host, or just come in and tell me what's going on in, in their restaurant. What really sucks right now is that I have to share this on uh, on my Facebook. I need a producer, but I don't have a producer. So bear with me for a second. I'm just going to post as quick as I can. So what's going on in your restaurant? We got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, some belt states are closing. Nobody's wearing masks. And I guess what happened was everybody found out that when you go out, you don't have to wear a mask. Or even if you do have to wear a mask, uh, you have a couple beers and all of a sudden the mask comes off. You're giving high fives. You're walking around to your boys. You're meeting girls. You're doing whatever you're doing, but you're going right back to normal. And that's why originally they said no in-house consumption of alcohol, which sounded crazy. You know, a bar is open, but you can't drink in there. I didn't know if it was going to be takeout or what they were going to do. Um, but yeah, that's what happens, right? Who polices the customer? I guess they're going to police the restaurant itself, but who's going to police the customer? Are you able to say, hey, sir, you got to put your mask on. The guys, two, three beers into it. Uh, how does uh, how does that work? I don't know. Six hundred dollars is running out with unemployment. Now, if you were lucky enough, and a lot of people weren't, to get on that unemployment, then that six hundred dollars plus unemployment has probably been keeping you going. And now that's running out in about three weeks, four weeks, looking for something. I know everybody is always talking about, uh, you know, what's next? What's the next stimulus? And as far as like a $2,000 uh, stimulus check that goes out to everybody, that's great, but that doesn't keep you going. I mean, what really keeps you going, especially in these times, your restaurant's going to open, then your restaurant's going to close. A lot of restaurants are open in, uh, in towns where the government is saying, if it's not an emergency, don't go out. So now you're open. Can you imagine if this was pre-COVID? Uh, you'd be open, and yet uh, your mayor and your governor and everybody else is telling you not to go out. It's definitely going to cut in on the market share that you're normally used to, right? So if there's 10,000 people on a Saturday night going out to dinner in Atlantic City, and that supports all the restaurants, then right now maybe there's only going to be like uh, – you know, 2000 people going out to dinner. So that sucks. So there's a lot of concern about money. I, I mean, if we can stay home and make money, we stay home and make money. If we can go back to work and make money, all the better, man. We'll go back to work and make money. But a lot of politicians say, you know, uh, oh, well, they're getting paid more money to stay home. There's no incentive to go back to work. Well, that's not true. Everybody wants to go back to work. No, nobody wants to just sit home. We've been sitting home for three months. You, I, I would think that you would agree with me. We all can't wait to get back to work. Now, what are we going back to work to? Um, we're going back to work to a lot of questions. And I talk about leadership all the time with like my friends. And I'm not just talking about Trump or Governor Murphy here in uh, in Atlantic City, but I'm talking about like, all the way down the line. Hey, Marissa, what's going on? Good luck to all of us. That's right. Maybe I'll see you this week. I work with Marissa. With, with 
like just information, you know, do you know what's going on with our restaurant? And this is a question that a lot of people have across the country. You know, managers aren't getting back to them. There's a lot of like waiter chats, waiter uh, text, group texts going out, Facebook groups. People are posting things. Most of them are rumors. You, you know, you're feeling good all day long. Then you see something online and then you can't go to sleep because you think, well, I'm losing my job. I'm losing my $600 a month. How am I going to make a living? And I think as much as restaurants are making news every day and and everybody is talking about restaurants, I think everybody just figures, well, well, just let them go back to work. Hey, they're open. They're making money. And a lot of people that I've talked to that are commented in and that I follow are saying that they are open and they're doing well right now. They're taking a lot of chances. They're coming home to kids. They're coming home to their parents. Um, and also... The other half is that they're not making money. So I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from people in Texas. I know I have a ton of followers in Texas, California, Florida. Tell me how it's going. You guys been open for a month. Um, tell me what to expect when I go back this week. Tell me what to expect with customers. Are customers more patient with us? Are they less patient? Tell me about uh, money. Are you going back to changes? A lot of people say like, you know, maybe maybe when they worked, it was a uh, it was a pool room, and now it's not. Now you have to tip out extra people every night. There's you're going back to a lot of different rules. I mean, y you know, you're left out there thinking, what am I walking into this week when I go to work? Masks, masks are mandatory in New Jersey, at least in the casinos. I believe in all dine in restaurants and. Uh, dining restaurant, that's like a new phrase, right? We used to say in-room dining was was uh, room service, and now we call it dine-in or dine-out or pick-up or curbside. Uh, it's a struggle for a lot of restaurants. And when you hear a lot of leaders say, you know, a lot of restaurants won't be back, you know, that's a major trickle down. There are restaurants, I worked at one restaurant for 18 years. I mean, that supported me, bought homes, did everything for 18 years at one place. If you've been there a, a long time at a place and that's been your main employer, you know, you don't know what you're going back to. So I would love to hear everybody's uh, opinion on what they're, what they're expecting. If you're back, what have you experienced so far? Um, What happens if you come back and you get sick? Two things. One thing, you got to worry about getting sick, obviously. And then the next thing is you got to worry about making an income. Now, are you, you're going to go to quarantine. That's 100%. So you go into quarantine. So you, I don't know if you can make money while you're in quarantine, whether there's a sick leave or whether there's unemployment or whether there's the CARES Act is still going to take care of you because you're unemployed due to the COVID circumstances. So that's nuts, you know, to think that it's not in your control. And especially what if, like, what if a manager of your restaurant gets sick? Then everybody on that crew has got to go on leave for 14 or 15 days. How, I mean, would that shut down the restaurant? I don't know. Do you, do you not tell anybody? Is it reported? Is it just like, oh, well, Mike got sick, so he's not going to be back for two weeks but everybody else that worked with them is, and then so on, and then so on, and then so on. A lot of people have been talking about when you go back to work, <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't sit and huddle with everybody. You got your buddies that you're all talking to. You're telling them what you did last night or making plans for tonight. You can't get near them, right? It's six feet. Now, managers are always pain in the ass, and they always want everybody to spread out, and you can't collect anywhere. And then you find yourself in the kitchen. There's a little place where everybody can gather. The, the coffee room or where you're making coffee at the bar where everybody gathers. I guess that's not allowed, but I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe there is. Maybe you just say, well, we have to get drinks and maybe that is allowed. That's why, you know, I came on today because we're looking to a big week in front of us. Monstrous week. With the Sunbelt States closing, with the tri-state area in New York who were hit the hardest, now they have the lowest case, they're going to open up. And this disease is just coming across the country. I've seen a lot of posts where people say, if you're going to get sick, just let the sick people get sick. You know, nobody's dying. 
It's like having the flu. You stay home for a week, then you go back to work. Well, the tough thing about information these days is there's too much of it, and there's too much of it that I can't trust. Can you get sick more than once? So is it possible between now and Christmas, I go back to work, and I get sick three or four times with COVID or come positive with COVID, where I'm quarantined, and that might cost me a month or two of work. You know, you lose five, 10 grand, you can't take that out after a year that we've been having, losing that kind of money. So there's there's two like major concerns. You want to be rah, 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 and you want to be uh, go to work. And then on the other hand, you want to, uh, you want to protect yourself. TC, what's up, man? Always good to hear from you too. So uh, TC is a good friend and uh, colleague. We've worked, got a ton of respect for him. One of the great waiters in Atlantic City. And from what he's understood is if one person gets sick, the entire space will get shut down. And I'm sure we're not 100% on details right now, T, because th does that mean like it gets shut down and then it gets cleaned up and then everybody comes back? Or uh, it's, it's scary that we don't have the control ourselves, right? Like I don't have control. I've been taking vitamins. I can get my build my immune system. I cannot get sick, but that doesn't guarantee me work. So there's two like major things. It's like health and money. And it's all out of our control. Thank you, T. Just outside for now, Cindy. Cindy, where are you calling in from? I, I, I talk to you a lot, and then I always forget what city you're at. Yeah, you're right. I mean, every day it changes. That's why uh, we wake up. You know, I go to bed and I'm feeling good. I talk to my manager, you know, stop by his house. I talk to my buddies. We're all feeling good about everything. Then the next day you hear, well, your restaurant's not opening. And you're like, oh, my God, what's going on with that? And then you hear, no, your restaurant's going to open. Don't worry. We're going to open seven days a week. Everything's going to be fine. So in the land of Facebook, <laughs> Avalon, yeah, you've been going outside. I remember two weeks. How's it going so far, Cindy? I remember you, you've uh, messaged in a couple times and talked to us. I appreciate that. And uh, I wonder how's it going? Are you, are you feeling safe? Are you making money? One thing uh, a, a good buddy of mine posted, and I'll paraphrase what he was posting about, but he was uh, questioning the dedication of a staff to actually, you, you know, withhold, with, keep all the rules and keep all the sanitation uh, as as safe as possible for the consumer, right? And I believe that everybody's intention is that that's what they want to do. And if you look at waiter sites, I, I don't complain here, really. We talk about the positive things. Um, but if you look at waiter sites, waiters take a whole ton of shit on a daily basis from management, right? Uh, you're mandatory working doubles. Uh, you got to come in early. You're on a shitty station four nights in a row you're back and you haven't made any money, but the guy next to you is absolutely killing it. Uh, you come back and you're running food instead of serving tables and your money is completely diminished. Now, I think that it's real important that, uh, you know, the house in general, everybody involved, like management, everybody should be involved 100% to make sure that the staff is as happy as possible. It's never perfect. Right. But you got to be happy. You got to understand. You got to say, I'm making a little bit of money. They're taking care of me. They're worried that I'm safe. They're taking all the precautions and they're making sure that if I'm on a shitty station tonight, then tomorrow I get a good station and the money can go. And that, you, you know, there's always like the, the teacher's pet. Right. The, the guy that's up to GM's butt all day long and he or she is getting four extra shifts. They're getting the great stations there. There's two guys in the back that aren't making any money. So that will create hostility, right? And you'll, you'll be like, fuck this, you, you know? I mean, you get to that frustration point and you don't want to go. And then with the additional concern of money, you know, am I collecting? Am I not collecting? It, am I going to get some help if I get sick? It just goes to the point where everybody's a human. And I'm not saying people are not uh, worried and are not going to, you, you know, we're professionals and we overcome a lot. So, uh the stress level is huge. And what knocks down, what takes down your immune system is stress, right? You are completely stressed out. You are not sleeping well. 
your 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 phone is pinging all day long with rumors not truths and uh so cindy and avalon and avalon is beautiful it's by uh like ocean city new jersey avalon is real exclusive i think she works at a country club there uh it's been real busy no money from me we are just being service bartenders for the servers yeah in pittsburgh restaurants here have been open for four weeks now at 50 percent my restaurant decided only to bring the family back i'm not one of them so i'm not starting a new job on wednesday yeah i can uh you know there's a lot of mom and pop places out there i wonder uh I mean, sometimes they are the best places to work for because they really, they, you know, they take you in like family, right, Steve? And hopefully they are a good place like that. And then when you're open at 50% or at 25%, New Jersey casinos are open at 25%. And that's all in uh, in here. Again, it's us in the front of the house that will be responsible for the comfort and safety of our guests. As always, right, Tom? People want to get out. <laughs> But they want a safe experience a hundred percent the restaurants that succeed are the ones that are making everybody feel the safest and that takes a total team effort front of the house back of the house busboy dishwasher waiters everybody's pitching in because if if somebody walks in and they get that eh, i don't know if this is good they will never come back everybody on their phones will light their phones up take pictures of a whole bunch of shit, and you're you're It'll take years for your reputation to come back. In the area in which we live in social media, exactly. Guys like you and I will need to avoid the hugs of the regulars. I know. You, you know, TC is a guy that has, uh, I mean, more regulars than anybody I know. People will be texting him and calling him all day on a Saturday to come in. And that's going to be funny because the first thing we want to do when we want to see them, especially after being away so long, is run up and give a hug, a kiss, you know, a, a handshake with the hug around, you know, and you can't. You can't do it to the people you're working with, and you can't do it to your customers. And it's kind of funny because we want to welcome them back in the best, best way we can, and then we really can't show them the love. Those owners wanted to protect it, so we are not opening inside. And the chef told me yesterday the food is also getting hard to come by right now to American cheese. Hey, sir, from United Kingdom, talk to me. What's going on in the United Kingdom? Are you guys experiencing this? I mean, not to be political, and I don't care if you're political. I don't care who you like and what you want to say about it anyway. But um, check it out. But America is really taking a beat on the COVID, right? If you see everybody else's chart, everybody was high, European. Europe is coming down and then they're flatlining, flatten the curve, flatten the curve, flatten the curve. Everybody says, you see ours the last three days, the United States has the highest totals ever since April, since March, we're up over 40,000. So we have more cases now and we're opening up. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to, uh, I worked at the Brigada three, seven at Metro. Okay. You have waited on me at Homestead. Hey, Steve, nice to hear from you. I still own my house in Brigantine. Well, that's awesome, Steve. Uh, Metro is a great restaurant. I've heard that Metro is not opening in their first phase, which I was surprised because they can they they can go from casual to nice. They can, you know, you can have a shrimp cocktail and you can also get an open hot turkey sandwich there. It's like that kind of, uh, uh, you know, casual to to elegant restaurant. They're usually open the most hours. You can get breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and even late night there. It crowds up after the shows. Nice hearing from you, Steve. Good luck with everything in Pittsburgh. <clears throat> Juan, agree with Mike. I went back to Twin Peaks, and service went down to 50%. Juan, are you, you're in Florida, right? It's nice to hear from you. Orlando is about to go locked down again. Yeah, right. So you're, you're off your unemployment. <laughs> you go through all the training and then you're on lockdown again. So now what does that mean? Uh, even if you travel to Florida or if you come from Florida and you go to New York or New Jersey, they put some kind of regulation uh, and I don't know how it's to be uh, in, enforced. But if you're coming from a state that's highly infected, 
you have to put yourself in a 14-day quarantine once you hit New York or New Jersey. How it's going to be enforced, I don't know. But what they're saying is, so you got to come to a business meeting in New York and you show up on a Tuesday, you got to wait two Tuesdays before you can go on that business meeting, which actually doesn't work. If you're traveling, you said they're going to get you on your license plates. If you don't have a license plate, you know, if, if they don't catch it, I don't know how that's going to work. But it seems like we're opening up and we're opening up at 25%. And there's so much limitations and there's so many people that are still scared out there to go out with good reason for a lot of reasons that it's just diminishing the market share. On a Saturday night, if everybody was going to go out, maybe they're going to go and it, you're going to go out maybe four times a month. Maybe now you're going to go out once. You're going to go out. You're going to go out to a place that makes you feel safe. And what that does to us as waiters, because that's my, I'm always looking at our point of view because I really don't think anybody else is except for the sites to complain. And that's funny. And I look at them and I think it's great, but I don't think anybody's saying, Hey, what about the waiter? You know, the guy's not making minimum wage. He's making under minimum wage. Uh, hundred percent of my tips. I get a zero check every single week for the last 30 years. A hundred percent of my income is tips. If you don't have people, you don't have tips. Let's hear what people got to say. What's up, Gary? How are you, man? Yeah, from what I heard, Gary, this, what do I think the sanitation will be, be of the tables between seatings? From what I heard, and again, it could be a rumor, is that the busboys will be on standby. They do want, at least in this area, few people to go to the table. So they want... They don't want, a, you know, five different waiter, uh, different restaurant employees going to the table. They want basically the waiter going to the table. And at the end, the protocol for sanitation and disinfecting the whole area, the bus person or a cleaning attendant, I'm not sure who's who that's going to fall under, is going to go and there's going to be a protocol. Also, everybody has been telling me that tables are not set. Everything is naked. When somebody sits down, it'll be your responsibility to go to a clean area where there are glasses, where there are setups made. And then we bring brand new glasses, silverware, napkins, the whole nine yards, whatever you're going to do to set your table up. Uh, hey, girlfriend, how are you, G? She's in Las Vegas, gave us a lot of uh, information about Las Vegas the other day. Really, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but... Uh, you can get back. My hotel, th this is uh, Chakub from United Kingdom. Awesome. I'd love to talk to you if you ever want to click in, Jakub, because it'd just be cool to talk to somebody from uh, United Kingdom that's doing the same thing we're he doing here in Atlantic City. My hotel opens July 6th. I don't know anything so far. I'm waiting for the news from work. Somebody told me this week I was talking to them, and uh, you know, I'm testing out a lot of stuff with this show. I used to do the interviews live. I've, I've done a lot, over a million views. It was great. And I really love talking to everybody and showcasing some talent. Um, and I wasn't too sure about this. And I started doing it. And somebody told me the other day, you know, when they, when they watch and they listen and they see people from around the country and around the world like yourself, uh, it makes them feel like they're a part of something, right? Like you, you're in United Kingdom. You have no news. <laughs> you're opening up next Monday. You're in the same boat as I am right here. I'm opening up on Thursday. I have no news. You know, I don't think it's anyone's fault. I think things change every single day. And it's hard to, to for me to get a phone call and say, hey, this is what's going on tomorrow. Because by tomorrow morning, it can change. Hang in there, brother. I appreciate you commenting in. And, and I hope you uh, listen again. Yes, it was fun for a time. My early 20s. Had to move back to Pittsburgh for reasons, spending time with family in D.C. The service industry is in turmoil right now. Several restaurants in Pittsburgh are just closing for good. A lot of restaurants are closing for good. You know, you, you put people in a desperate situation. Somebody uh, from out of town, somebody I know from out of town, not New Jersey, out of town. And they're opening up and they're they're restaurant owner. And their philosophy for right now is to pack the house. They want to do as much business as they can. Are they going to keep it safe? Yeah, but they're, they don't want to go out of business. They want to be open next year. I'm not opening on the second. <laughs> I work at Ocean, so I don't know. From everything I know, we are opening on the second. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it changed. 
but I've seen the announcements. I've seen I've seen Ocean make the announcements themselves. So uh, I would, you know, that would be surprising. Myself going back, I've seen CDC uh, guidelines, and one of them was to cross train employees, and also to it was almost saying like keep keep a team on the bench, right? So on Saturday night, if you got six guys out there and somebody gets sick, everybody is. Uh, Everybody, nobody can go back to work unless you got six guys on the bench. So then you bring in two bus boys, two waiters, two runners, two bartenders, and now you can open up for the next two weeks with these guys. Hopefully none of those get sick. And by the time they get sick, maybe the other crew will come back. C crazy shit. You're open on the, on the second too. I wonder if you went back to meetings. I know people, Gary, in uh, Atlantic City have been going back to you know, some meetings. To, this is the new protocol. Oh. Well, we open on the second, Pam. And I'm not sure. I haven't got word yet. Nobody has uh, Nobody has called me about uh, coming back. A lot of people have gotten emails. I still fa feel fairly confident that I will get called back. But, you know, that's not until it happens. Contact tracing. I wonder how that works. I mean, I saw, you know, like two weeks ago, right? Uh, everybody's T-Mobile phone went down. And then everybody on Facebook the following day was posting that they put some kind of like contact tracing in there. Is that a cons conspiracy theory? Is that really the truth that like they, they, honest to God, put something in there? All that is good for the safety of humanity, right? All that is bad in that I have no control. So I went to Wawa and it, it, Wawa is like our convenience store here. It's where we all get our coffee in New Jersey. It's like Dunkin' Donuts or Sheets in Pennsylvania or I don't know where in California. So I go to Wawa and somebody else was at Wawa. You know, the, 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 the cashier at Wawa ended up positive. But just because of that, now I can't work. I've been hearing a lot of things about uh, uniforms, like you can't go home with your uniform. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if that's uh, some... Some houses are making that rule where you have to go in and you have to use the uh, the dressing room and get your wardrobe from uh, from the house. I guess that makes sense because what are you doing after work? Are you going out to a bar? Are you coming in contact with people? Are you did you do something before you came into work? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if contact tracing will get through here in America. I mean, people are feeling that their civil civil liberty rights are being taken away for wearing a mask. And if you want to contact trace people and find out where somebody was last night, I don't know if that's going to go over. Great time to search for our talents, but service to make an income in the industry is so far from being the same, regardless of when you open, not being negative is just realistic. Right. It's tough times, Juan. Juan, you, you started branching out. You're doing like leather goods and stuff. I see you on Facebook. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. Show me something. You, you do your training tomorrow. My training, if I'm called in, will be on Wednesday. So I will find out. I'm expecting to get a call from my boss either way tomorrow, whether I'm going to stay home or whether I'm not going to stay home. I just think that, you know, Jesus, we dropped the ball because uh, – other countries did it, and other countries did it better than us. And whether you want to tr blame Trump or blame individual states, I'll tell you when <clears throat> back in April, when the rule went out to say, I'm going to let each state take care of each state, I was surprised and I was also a little disappointed because my own thought was that we all do it together, right? California, Montana, New Jersey, we're all going to do this together. We're going to shut down, we're going to put on some masks. We're going to flatten the curve. We're going to go back out to work and we're going to, we're going to go to work. That's not what happened. Everybody did whatever they were going to do. Florida opened up early. Now the governors are saying uh, maybe a little too early. Yeah, I guess. I mean, there's record numbers. We're four fucking months into this thing. Our unemployment is running out. Some people haven't got unemployment. A good friend of mine, mine is on like 14 weeks now with no unemployment. How the hell do you get by with 14 weeks no unemployment. Uh, so, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't think there's an excuse. We're doing more testing. It doesn't matter. The numbers come out. Hospitalizations. Everything else. 
uh, it affects our job. It affects our income. I don't like when they use the word economy. We have to open up the economy. Make it about people. Make it about people. We have to put people back to work. Yeah, we got to go back to work, but we also have to make an income. And I think there's 11 million people that work in restaurants. 11 million people. I mean, that's one fourth of the people that went out on uh, unemployment. They shut down all our restaurants. Our business will not come back to be. And if you guys have been around as long as me, I don't make a salary. I make tips. And I can tell you what I'm going to make every single week of the year, year round. I know what I'm going to make in July. It's going to be great. I know what I'm going to make in October. It's going to be less. I know in January. But I can tell you ahead of time as if it was I was a salary worker. And I have no idea what money I'm going to make. I think I might do really terrific in, uh, I think I might really do terrific when we go back. A lot of places are jamming. Everybody wants to get out of the house. Well, shit, that makes sense. If we have a snowstorm here in the Northeast for three days, if people are coming in, we crush it the next week. We've been in for almost four months and we're going to open up a casino and they're going to come out. Now I've seen some restrictions on the casinos. And their numbers, they're, they're all around like 12,000 occupancy normally capacity. And they're all in like the 3,000 person range on the casino floor. Uh, there are some smaller casinos that are, you know, like 2,800. And then there are some bigger casinos that get, can fit like 35, 3,800, 4,000. But generally you're talking about like 3,000 people in, in a casino. And restaurants are at 25%. I would imagine that if you can fit 400 people in your restaurant, you open up and that means that you can only have 100 people in your restaurant at the same time. So before 101 walks in, one person has to leave. This is what I'm assuming. Um, I don't know about the tables. I think they'll just all be un undressed. There won't be tablecloths. There won't be anything out. It'll be uh, set up to order on the fly. People will come in. They'll sit down and be spaced out appropriately. I mean, we could dedicate tables that are dead right now. When is American Cut opening? From what I understand, American Cut is opening up on Thursday, along with Ocean Casino. Ocean Casino said that uh, they are offering as many dining options as they can for their customers. I am not part of Ocean in, in part of their PR I'm just telling you what I know, and I believe that's the plan. Could it change? Everything could change. So I, I can't tell you, but uh, but that's the plan. We're going to be busy, and it's summer in Atlantic City. You know what? Memorial Day was busy in Florida, and look what happened. I hope that doesn't happen to us. I think outside, everybody's proved that we can we can open up and be outside, and it doesn't spread as fast, Right. But I also think that uh, <clears throat> Chase did a study on credit card slips in restaurants. So where, and, and obviously Chase is giant. Everybody's got a Chase card in their back pocket. So where the charges were high, where the most charges were in restaurants, it correlated to the highest COVID infections. Now, this gets out and starts making national news that if you dine in a restaurant, your chances of being infected are greatly increased. I think everybody knows that. I just don't think it's personal yet. I just think if people are scared to come out to restaurants, it's going to hurt our industry more. What can we do to stop that? Governor Murphy is just looking for another reason to shut down. I mean, I thought that uh, Florida, the way they were talking was that... Uh, Stay strong. Well, I appreciate that. If you come into American Cut next week, I want you to stop by and say hello to me. We'll stay six feet apart, but it'd be nice to see you. Thank you, Lily. So um, so the direct correlation between uh, restaurant sales and COVID is going to put the scare out there for people. And when we go inside, I think you got to wear masks, right? And, and it kind of if we have to wear a mask, we have to wear a mask. Jesus, we're four months into it. Somebody, we, we got to do something. And then because some YouTuber gets out and says, if you wear a mask, it'll kill you. I mean, I don't know, man. I'm not a doctor. I, I don't know what the hell's going on. I would feel more comfortable when I go to, when I go to Wawa and buy a cup of coffee, I feel more comfortable that everybody else has a mask and I have a mask too. And to wait on people. Hey, James, how are you? 
Stay safe yourself, sir. Um, we were talking a lot last week about football and NFL coming back. NFL related to, uh, you know, all the sports bars, the restaurants, the sports books, but across the nation. I mean, if the football game is on, there's a place to go. Uh, James is the head chef at Lincoln Field. So everybody who's eat at Lincoln Field, he oversees it in one way or another. The players, the uh, the concessions, everything. He, you do an amazing job. Thanks for everything, James. And I wish you the best of luck, too. Um. That's another thing, man. Sports has such a big effect on our income. Sports and conventions, all right? So baseball is probably going to do 60 games, although there's a lot of people testing positive. And the, the one thing that a lot of people aren't saying, that this is worries me. I think, and I hope to God, that if I catch COVID, I survive it, first of all, right? And everybody around me. But it leaves a lasting impression on you. So if I get COVID today and I get through it and get quarantined and God bless, we get all over this by Christmas and everybody's back to, to having a normal life and I go in for a routine procedure or I get a terrible case of bronchitis in the worst snowstorm, you know, in 2023, that could effectively kill me because my respiratory system isn't going to be the same. I'm going to have some scarring. I, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't know what it's going to do. Now, if you're an, an elite athlete, you're a football player, you're running a 4-2, and you catch COVID, and you go out and you come back. Now you're running a maybe a 4-7. And if I'm making $25 million a year because I can run a 4-2, and now I go to a 4-7. Shit, I ran a 4-7 in high school. Everybody can run a 4-7. So if you're running a 4-7, you're not at the top. You are not the elite. You, you know, those elite athletes that are at the, you know, top 1% of the population, and that's what they do, and that's why they entertain us, that is an enormous, enormous risk, I would believe, for uh, for an athlete to take. It's an enormous risk for me. If I had $30 million in the bank, I'd tell my restaurant, listen, I'm going to sit this out for a bit. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's that constant struggle that I'm talking about, money versus health. And do you do it safe? Do you bring people back? I, I agree 100%. I mean, me and Giovanna had a long talk about it. And uh, TC, Tommy, saying before, it's up to us. And and I know, like, Tom's one of the best, right? Gary, you're one of the best. And when, when you're out there, I mean, that's why you guys have so many request parties. And when you're out there, it, it is going to be up to us. And I think that a lot of people are going to be very uh, supportive. I think a lot of people are going to uh, be really appreciative of us going back to work. You know, what I would like is that when all the waiters go back to work and when we're going in at four o'clock, I want them clanking the pots. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're not essential workers and we're going in a very dangerous situation because we don't have all the PPE equipment, right? We have a mask and we have some gloves and we are not saving lives. I used to wait uh, a manager of mine, Pete, everybody knows Pete in Atlantic City, Pete McCullough. And when the shit got hot and, and when you were deep in the weeds, he'd always say, yo, we're not saving lives. We're giving people a good time. Take it easy, breathe, and go give people a good time. But we're not saving lives. And I respect the hell out of everybody in the hospitals. Jesus, they were waking up early and they were working long days and coming home. Um, they were, uh, you know, changing their clothes in the garage so they wouldn't bring everybody in. Uncle Pete. <laughs> Uncle Pete, Gar. Uncle Pete was good. You know, Uncle Pete's one of the best managers I ever worked with. I saw him about a year ago. Great guy. But he used to say that, you know. So let's see. Hello there. How are you? Moldova. Hello from Moldova. I don't know where Moldova is. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, Like close to Russia? I don't know. Wish you all the best in your coming. We expect in the industry. You are going to be fine. Wearing a mask is not so great. Face, skin suffers. Yeah. Speaking to the S is difficult and many more inconvenience, but you're doing it. And that's great. That's great that you're doing it and you're saying, and you're giving everybody a little hope that it's not going to be so bad. Hey, I can work with a mask. I've, I think we can all work with a mask. A mask is a pain in the ass, but you know, I can overcome, I can overcome, I could work fucking blindfolded if I had to. I think a lot of the guys that are uh, texting in on me, we could all do that. You, you know, 
uh, we overcome a lot. So a mask, I think I can overcome. I think I can communicate with a mask on. I believe that I can understand people well enough with the mask on. I have a great chef that I can communicate all the time. And I think there'll be a lot of, uh, where am I? I'm in the United States in New Jersey. So uh, I'm going to have to look up Moldova. Mold. Moldova. If you know where Moldova is, anybody, let me know or Google it and show me, tell me. But uh, yeah, going with the masks, I, I don't. Did you see the people in Florida? I guess there was like a town hall meeting or something like that. And the local government was telling everybody it's going to be mandated in our city. I think it was Miami, maybe not, in our city to wear masks. And the people were coming up and they were uh, saying, that God made a perfect respiratory system and that we are interfering with that, putting a mask on. I mean, God bless you if you're going to church on Sundays. I don't, I don't begrudge anybody any beliefs. But Jesus, four months into it, we have higher numbers now than we did before all this and we can't put a mask on? I'm no expert, and I don't know the difference between the experts, but you take out the experts and they say masks help. And then some guy runs a YouTube video that says, I'm a doctor in wherever, and masks definitely hinder, blah, blah, blah. And then everybody's like, see this? See this? I told you we shouldn't be wearing masks. I mean, if, if, if it helps me not get sick, I'm going to wear a mask. If it helps me not transmit this, I'm going to get a mask. Eastern Europe country. Yeah, I, I was thinking like, Maybe old USSR, maybe close to Russia, Ukraine, like in, in that area. That's what it just made sense to me. Uh, Moldova, anyway. Thank you, Juan. So, uh, how about this? When you go back to work, I miss my crew, right? I'm sure everybody misses their crew. But then when you go back to work, the same shit that everybody's been complaining about for years starts up again right? Uh, the good, the guy that gets the good stations, uh, the person that's controlling the schedule, um, the jealousy and money. And maybe you go back and it's a pool room. Uh, generally in Atlantic city, we're all, uh, all the, all the houses are union, generally speaking. So it's, it's really controlled. You have one seniority, one to 10 seniority, one gets all the benefits, 10 gets the leftovers. That's just how it is. And if you do it, it, it's a decent living. You get benefits. It's great. When you're not in a union house, and I've been in both. I've been 14 restaurants I've been in my career. Uh, a butler, bartender, banquet server, everything. Hey, Sarah, how are you? You have friends in Taiwan and Korea. They're wearing masks, and they have very low numbers. Yeah. I mean, the Asian, the Asian countries uh, came off right away, and uh, their numbers went down drastically. Right. Right. Just be I have the mask so I can still get it from somebody. Right. But I would imagine if I'm wearing a mask and you're wearing a mask, I am protected more than not having a mask. So maybe it will help me out 50%. Maybe it will help me out. If I'm dealing, my dog's going to go crazy and start barking. So I'm, I'm yelling at her. So if everybody's wearing masks, hopefully the numbers will go down. I mean, that's what we're doing right now. We can't shut, uh, we can't just be close. I mean, maybe we can be closed. I don't know. Can we just be closed? Can we just go on employment for, till December? And I, I don't know. But that's what's on my mind. Let's see what, what I made some notes here earlier. How about the one uh, girl? She texted me. And she was getting a, uh, she was signing up for a lease for an apartment and she got a note from the leasing firm. And it said that because our industry is so unstable, she would have to put up the full year's rent ahead of time. Because if it was month to month, they would know that like by this, by the fall, you're not going to be able to pay your rent. And that crazy. I mean, people already know that we're in the shits. <laughs> I think originally people are going to come out and they are going to be very gracious. I think they're going to come out and they're going to feel, feel uh, 
tremendous at getting out of the house and us giving them that great experience. I have a lot of confidence in where I work at American Cut that uh, I, I know I know our chef. I mean, he loves food. He loves making food. He loves making people happy. So I'm sure all he's doing all day long is spinning how he how he can give the best experience. So I'm confident about things like that. I don't know if business lasts. I don't know if we get scared. I don't know if the second wave came along. What did we hear for a long time? It was like, if the second wave comes, it's going to cost us a lot more than just shutting down. Well, we're not out of the first wave and the second wave is coming. You look after your daddy's 91. Go to the house shopping, worried about that. Yeah, a lot of people, and I think th there's a lot of restaurants and there's a lot of uh, casinos. I don't want to speak for everybody that said, we're going to offer you your job back. And then what you can do is you can pass on it and say, no, uh, you can't pass on it the second time. But the first time was just, just for that, Pam. It was, if you're caring for somebody, if you have somebody that's in higher risk at home, if you're in higher risk, uh, you can pass right now. And you don't have to come back. You're not going to lose seniority. You're not going to lose your job. You're not going to, uh, to lose anything. However, the thing is, when do you get called back? You can't call them in two weeks and say, I'm, I'm ready. I can come back now. You can't do that. You have to wait for them to call you. And I think you keep it, you keep seniority and all your benefits till next year. We could definitely go on unemployment until December. We will just have to turn the military budget slightly, very, very slightly. You know, I'm not worried about the United States money. The, the Fed came out. Uh, chairman of the Fed came out and he said that the, the numbers are low enough. Daniel, thanks for for uh, commenting in. He said the the, the you know the the loan rate is good <clears throat> to think big on this second stimulus. I'm worried about my household income, right? And and you're worried about yours and the guy down the street in my neighborhood to come back strong and to come back at 25 percent. If you just say numbers, 25%, well, then it's 25% business, 25% income, except rent stays at 100%. So 25%, if you were making 1000 bucks a week, now you're making 250 a week, that's a hard pill to swallow. A total lockdown would probably infringe on civil rights. Yeah. I mean, that's what the argument has been the whole time. You can't tell people to stay at home. You can't keep people in their homes. Um, we've never been through this before. We've never been th uh, through it before. I just said that my one thought was that I anticipated, I expected, and I was disappointed when we didn't work as a country. We worked as individual states. And I know like New York and New Jersey on the East Coast here were hit the hardest. And now it's Florida and Texas. And now in, in California and Arizona and all the small states were saying, well, we don't have any infection. So why are you closing down our restaurants? But it's a small country, right? I mean, we travel all the time. We go across state lines. Um, I eat in Pennsylvania probably about as many times a year as I go out to eat in New Jersey because it's close. And I have relatives in Pennsylvania and Philadelphia is only about uh, 50 minutes away from me. So from here to Pennsylvania and then, you know, Philadelphia from, uh, I came in up around Scranton. So it's up in, uh, Royal Pennsylvania, Northeastern Pennsylvania. I mean, and then I go up there. So I'm the germ. I travel and everybody else is traveling. So I think even in the small towns, all you need is one, right? One, get back to baseball, get back to football, get back to stadiums filled up 50%, 25%, 100%. Numbers keep Numbers keep going up. The economy can't last. And when I say economy, I, I'm generally talking about restaurants because that's my concern and that's what I love to talk about. I love coming on here every week and hearing everybody's thoughts. Um, it makes me feel like I'm not alone. Like, hey, uh, let's see. This hurts me worse on unemployment. I have a family court issues. Family court takes 55%. Unemployment is... 1200 stimulus was taken by family court. I know I'm not alone. Hey, there are, thanks, Steve. There are so many people with problems with unemployment and how we're getting paid and going to family court or just not getting paid. You know, if you put everybody out of work and then 47 million people depend on their income from unemployment and there's no number to call, 
and the unemployment, I, I think that's a, a failure in leadership. I don't know how it can be fixed because I'm not a politician and I'm not a city leader or a state leader, but Jesus Christ, Florida, JR, I'll get to you in one second. Um, JR is from Florida. I know JR. Tell your dad I said happy birthday. Isn't bad. Numbers have been inflated by 25%. Florida isn't that bad. Um, Florida, I think at the beginning, 97% of the people that were on, on that filed for unemployment weren't getting paid. So if your citizens go on unemployment, Jesus, you got to pay them. And I know, you know, the systems were outdated. That's because we don't spend money on people, right? If Amazon ran the unemployment, we'd all get our fucking check. You bet 100% on that. You, you dial them up. Shit, I've been buying stuff and I get it the next day. Amazon didn't miss it beat right so if they can do it it's possible and if you put your people if you force people to stay home you got to be able to help them out i think it's insane that the senate is saying that the next stimulus package is over their dead bodies it's just too many people and when things were too big to fail when we bailed out uh, the car industry and the banks i mean there's too many people to fail there's too many restaurants to fail there's too many people, I, I've said this many times in my videos, <laughs> going out to dinner is one of the biggest pleasures in life. And whether you're in a business like us or whether you're not, you're, you're planning that special day to go out to dinner for a week, right? You're going to the dry cleaners, you're thinking what you're going to wear, you're talking about it at work. And when you enter that restaurant, experience is a word i think that is well overplayed but you are it's it's fun it's enjoyable you know you're going to have a couple drinks you're going to have fantastic food it's one of the biggest pleasures in life it's what we do to celebrate it's what we do to treat ourselves after we work hard and these things are going away and they're not dependable i think a lot of reasons why restaurants won't be busy is because you think maybe i'll go to that place i really liked it but you don't know if they're open you don't know if they have a limited menu. You don't know what to expect. You know, it, it's tough. I think uh, Florida's not bad at 25%. My opinion is the guests should wear masks every time they serve the server is at the table. I would agree with you, Sarah. I can also feel for customers, you know, once you sit down in your spot, you got a booth and you're sitting down, even if you're four people. And you're sitting down with four people that maybe you've traveled with or that you feel safe that you're not going to get COVID from. I can understand that they want to relax. They want to take off their masks. I anticipate that. I also antici anticipate myself not getting that close, not going in somebody's ear if they're, you know, tell them you have to speak up. I can't hear you. I got a mask on, right? If they're looking at, the, here's a big pet peeve. They're looking at the menu and they're like, I'll have to... Look at me when you talk. Well, we're going to have to train people. Look at me when you order this time. Um, but getting up and going to the bathroom when you have to get up from your table and you have to walk all across the table and you already had two Manhattans and a glass of wine, I think that's going to be tough to police. And I think that's one big reason why this, this spreads. And I mean, I'm not going to be the person in my restaurant to say this. Multiple lawsuits against unemployment in Las Vegas. I bet. I, I mean, you just can't, you just can't forget about people, you know, something that it was nobody's fault. It was certainly not our fault as employer, as employees, you know, most people, what was the statistics? Most people don't have more than $500 in the bank for an emergency. And I'm not going to tell you whether I do or not, but I have no money to speak of. Okay. But most people don't. So maybe you can get by a week. Maybe you can go by two weeks without pay. Um, Boeing certainly didn't. I mean, the big industries that, uh, got, got to bail out and got that, uh, that loan, that $500 billion loan. And then they say, well, we're not going to tell anybody who got that. I'll tell you what, I'll take a loan. Everybody can tell my name, Mike Fagan. We, we gave Mike Fagan $250,000 loan and it was great. Major restaurant chains like Darden have been able to stay open because of to goes. Unfortunately, that means bad news for waiters, right? JR, are you a waiter? I, I'm not sure. 
they should have quarantined everybody for a month at the beginning. COVID would have been history back to business. Right. If everybody didn't bitch and complain and say, this is against my, this is tyranny. You can't do this. And everybody sucked it up for a month. We wouldn't be four months into it right now. We'd have numbers under control. Maybe we'd be wearing masks. All right. We can get by with the mask. We can leave our house. We can make money. We can live an average life or, or a normal life and we can get back to work. Right. But now we are the most spoiled would you say you know we feel like we deserve everything we feel like uh everything is due us i'm a united states citizen so for that reason i uh olive garden okay and you're not waiting on many people but it's mostly takeout so then if they offer you the job and they say listen we're doing curbside only so we're going to pay you minimum wage you lose all your tips you can't collect unemployment and you're beat that way I mean, uh, I understand if you're an official, it's hard, but, uh, that's your job. And during crisis, that's when you should shine. Anybody can be a half-assed politician most of the year, you know, and get by and give us sound bites and tell us we we're fighting for the working man. Everything is a conspiracy. It certainly makes people think so. I know some, some great people, good family people, good morals, uh, that are good friends of mine, you know, and, and I think highly of them. I think they're educated. I think they do well at their job. And most of my friends are into business and you hear some crazy shit come out of them because, you know, whether they're posting or whether in conversation and you know, we're nuts, we're all nuts. And the conspiracy, I don't know who's against us. I, I don't know about that. I'll tell you what stress levels. Have you gone to the grocery store? I'm out of my mind. I want to take somebody's head off at the grocery store. And it's because we're all like right here that the lady in front of me, you know, she hasn't been out in three months. So her only social time or man, because I, I go to the grocery store like three times a week. That's their time to socialize. Oh, my son's in town. Listen, lady, Jesus Christ, not at ShopRite. I'm in line here. I got the mask on. I'm barely getting by, you know, not now go home. When you come to my restaurant, we'll talk about it all until then. Hey, that's it. What do you got to say? Waiters and bartenders and bar backs, boss person are the only ones getting big hit. The new system won't need us all. Yeah. It's going to change. The industry is going to change whether that means less servers or more food runners or less interaction, like whether it's the little computers that like Olive Garden have or those places, that, that might be the case. Um, but you can bet right now that a place like Darden, you know, those bean counters and those executives are thinking, how can we succeed in the future and how can we do it better than we, and different than we did? Um, you know, so I had a bunch of fun talking. It lets me get all my stress out. I love hearing all the information from everybody that, that, that uh, comments in. It makes me feel like we're all part of something. I've been toying around with the vodcast here that uh, I don't know what day. I've been doing it with Josh. I was doing it with, uh, I did one with my girlfriend, Giovanna. I wanted to do it myself. I, I'm playing around with times. What I would have really loved to do is I would like to put this out like four days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, in mid afternoon. So the West Coast and East Coast can all chime in. And just follow this right up until when we go back to work. Let everybody share and tell me what they're going through. Went to a local restaurant with some friends, with some workers, manager, policy. Uh, also, people occupied their table for hours and had no respects for others wanting to eat. 45-minute wait at 9 o'clock. Yeah, right? First time out, Steve. First time out in three months. You want to sit down and you want to get your money's worth, maybe, right? No, Sarah, thank you. I, I appreciate you always being involved. It makes me feel like, uh, you know, we're not alone and we're all kind of going through this thing together uh, from Pittsburgh to California, Arizona, Texas. And uh, I'm going to keep playing around with this. I have, I have a lot of fun with it and I love hearing from everybody. And uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. Do it like four times a week. Maybe I'll have a different guest host with me every week. Maybe I'll have the same. Um, it depends. You know, next week I might start working, so I might not be able to do it. But when I can do it, I will come on because I love hearing from everybody. Juan, good luck to you, brother. 
I wish you all the best. I wish everybody all the best. Thanks so much for watching. This is Waiter Nation. We're changing everything you think a waiter is one story at a time. Buffets are done, JR. Buffets are done for the near future. And that's just a sad. See you, Gar. I can't, uh, I'll see you in person one day soon, I hope. Hey, Romeo, what's up? Romeo, you got to come on air with me one time. Tell me about how you're doing in the restaurant over there. Tell me about what precautions you're taking. Romeo De Bono was the, uh, he was the chef at Old Homestead Steakhouse at Borgata for years. This guy invented shit that nobody else could have done. He took on a job that maybe nobody else could have done. Made it successful for 16 years, Rome's, and uh, opened up his own place in uh, Summers Point, a kind of like real sandwich, a some place that you would find in South Philly. And I would, I would love to, uh, you know, just have you come on. We'll talk about it if you if you come on from from the restaurant. Uh, let, let's see it. Like you can be the cameraman. You can show everybody what's going on in your restaurant. I would love that. I would love. I would love anybody in a restaurant. My buddies at Vagabond, uh, Wonder Bar, you know, Ducktown, uh, anybody locally, come on. We'll talk. You talk to me about what you're doing. Uh, let some people know. And then walk around the restaurant. Show me how you're doing the, the social distancing. Show me the kitchen. Show everybody the kitchen. You know, uh, you guys are all major players in Atlantic City. And uh, even, even, even Lou, you know, if you would ever mind Lou, that would be an honor cafe 2825 like all you guys yeah rums i'm probably working this week but I'll, I'll get in touch with you romeo and uh we'll go on we'll go on sometime we'll come in we'll talk man it'll be good it'll be good i appreciate it from you too guys i'm checking out my daughter bought some new furniture today and she's super excited and i'm going over a place and i'm going to uh yeah 100 percent, man you deserve everything and uh, I'm going to go and uh, have a little dinner with uh, my daughter at her house and celebrating new furniture. Peace out, everybody. Thank you.